maybe in the 80s up to the early 90, uh, I was a full-time political activist in the South Maharashtra context, Sangli, Satara, Sholapur, Kolapur, that region. Uh, part of a movement called uh, Mukti Sangash movement, uh, which was trying to mobilize people around, especially the uh, toiling peasantry around drought, water, agriculture, uh, employment guarantee scheme, that time which was very active in Maharashtra, actually. So, And also that was a time a lot of textile workers had come back from Mumbai after the, you know, the prolonged uh, Datta Saman led strike. So there was an interesting movement to mobilize support for the, you know, uh, striking workers in Mumbai and bit of a workers' peasantry alliance which we try to build in. So actually my understanding about uh, social processes, socio-political processes has been actually grounded in that context of uh, working with the drought affected people in uh, South Maharashtra. As part of that, it was also uh, not only trying to demand uh, things from the state, yes, we did a uh, lot of things, but we are also made an effort uh, uh, to articulate some alternatives in terms of uh, what should be a minimum access to water. In fact, when you look at uh, you know, livelihoods in the drought zone context, uh, we also tried to mobilize people around uh, building up people's alternatives to different things. <coughs> so there was an interesting struggle uh, in Sangli called the Beliraja movement, which was a struggle against uh, you know, sand excavation for the riverbeds, for example. Or there was a massive movement even now which is taking place in South Maharashtra for equitable access to water. A movement which is trying to mobilize people around, uh, you know, issue of restructuring some of the government schemes uh, around, uh, you know, so that. So I have been part of that movement to some extent up to about 90. With a lot of uh, agriculture experiments and things, we came in contact with very interesting people, pro people, uh, scientists and technologists called uh, Professor Dabul Karani. Shithology has been also part of that uh, Prayog Parivar network. I had another guru in the water sector called Kayab Date from Mumbai who is no more. So I have been part of that, so I have been. Uh, I mean, privileged to, you know, learn from many of the so Vilasa Salungi that time with Pali Panchayat and equitable access to water. So, I am a part of a generation which actually learned from a lot of these people and uh, I think whatever small contributions we have been able to make is basically standing on the shoulders of these pioneers in this work. So, partly uh, I have come for this meeting because I have heard about Ekta Parishad and I thought when Radha is coming here then I think we should have interaction. So, it's one of the issues which have been and also part of a small political group called uh, Shami Mukti Dal Democratic which has been in Maharashtra for quite some time. Uh, try to address issues of class, caste, patriarchy and also environmental issues. I mean in the 80s has been the issue, I think there has been a lot of political churning around <coughs> some of these issues. Soviet Union had crumbled, so some of our own pet theories around uh, transformative politics and social change has been so all of us have been looking for you know, answers so I think this has been a very interesting process of learning for me in the last 20 30 years uh, you know associated with a lot of people and uh, trying to articulate a different political agenda and I see this meeting also partly trying to answer my quest uh, for that the second heart is which uh, Craig my young colleague mentioned about this small uh, civil society or NGO group we have which has been primarily working on water and little bit into uh, renewable energy issues called Society for Promoting Participative Ecosystem Management, uh, short form is Sopeco, which some of us set it up uh, in the early 90s, trying to say that, um, you know, how do we provide, uh, you know, I mean, how do you produce knowledge which can be helpful to the actual toilet movements. So we worked on issues of how do you integrate small versus large with uh, Narmada Bacha Vandola, this whole question about dams became much more critical. So in fact, uh, I don't know, some of you might have seen, there was a book which a few of us wrote, uh, which is trying to articulate an alternative to the Sadashro project, uh, you know, in the uh, mid of uh, 80s and things. So we have been working on issues of uh, that type of a thing in the water sector, how do you uh, come up with alternatives to the government or the state thinking about this and mobilize uh, political support around this alternative. So we have been working with the different movements in Maharashtra and also different dimensions of water and bit of Hindu energy and things and lately some of us have been working on issues related to water conflicts in the country and there is a larger network called uh, Forum for Policy Dialogue on Water Conflicts in India and in Maharashtra also there is an interesting initiative called uh, Lokha Bimuk, Pani Dor and Sangash Shumanj which is trying to engage the state on the type of policy initiatives which is coming uh, in the water sector and Maharashtra has been leading this whole reform uh, package in terms of water, you know, different laws, policies and type of things. And large scale water diversion is taken from the agriculture sector or the rural sector into 
urban and uh, uh, industrial sector. I think Prayas uh, group has done the, re the resource and literacy, I mean lit uh, livelihood group had done a very interesting study that in the last 10 years, Maharashtra uh, from projects which have been committed as primarily agriculture or irrigation water projects nearly, uh, I mean it's a rough estimate, 2000 million cubic meters of water being diverted by decision of the cabinet, which is not even a very transparent decision making. I think Ajit Pawar, when he was the you know uh, irrigation minister and things, diverting water. Now, when I said 2000 million cubic meters of water, we are meaning or it implies something like about four to five lakh hectares of irrigated agriculture. So, what happens to people who are dependent on this type of you know water? I'm not saying that. No water should be given to industries, but under no, what conditions and what happens to people's livelihoods who are dependent on this? And this we can see all over the place. You look at Hirakul Dam and other type of place. So, I think this is one issue where uh, resources are getting reallocated from a particular you know, livelihood type of thing to a different type of thing. What happens to societies which are this? So, this is one of the issues which I think is important. It's not only water. I think there are also, and some people mentioned about you know uh, forests, for example. What happened to the fishery sector? I mean, some of these all primary production <coughs> sectors are, I mean, uh, uh, getting the you know this whole uh, attack on the resource base. Some people have said that this is like uh, accumulation through dispossession to some extent, where large you know communities are getting dispossessed uh, through. I mean, the early phase of accumulation it was you know state in a violent type of thing, but you craft new policies and you know legal regimes to uh, exclude people from this type of thing. So this has I been mean, one of the issues. Uh, which we have been you know, confronted with. I don't think that we have answers to it or anything, but I think in the collective of this type, I think we need to search for answers. The third hat is, I think, which also Ashok, my friend, uh, mentioned is that in Pune, over the last maybe 15 months or something, we have started an interesting initiative called Alternative Forum Pune. I am partly here because I think in this whole discussion when Rajaji's visit was saying because uh, Ashish could not be here and uh, Kalpavich team is having their own internal meeting. Mm. Then I volunteered that I'll partly be here. I could not do much to mobilize people for the meeting. Uh, so this is an initiative which started about um, in 2013, around a little before April or something. Uh, some of you might have seen the book by Ashish and um, Srivastava yes, called uh, Churning yes. Earth. Uh, you know, it's a very interesting book. It's not only critiquing the problems or it's not only problematic what's happening today, but also has a very interesting section on drawing on different type of positive experiences. Uh, to articulate an alternative agenda. Now, one can differ with it, and think, but I think I thought it's one of the very interesting conceptual as well as based on actual experience of different sectors. Water, energy, livelihoods, uh, I think health and various other type of sectors to draw together. So, uh, I mean, I could hear a whole lot of a bit of a pessimism around the group, the way people are saying, but I don't hold that. I think there are very interesting things happening in this country and we need to draw them together and learn what are the learnings and things from that. So, uh, Alternative Forum Pune is a group of people uh, which meet I think once a month basically to share some of these alternative ideas, visions, work actually on the ground and things so that we have a bit of a self-critiquing each other across sectors and things so that we can learn uh, from all this. Uh, I think in Pune we have certain very interesting groups are working on alternatives like you have Prayas which is working on energy work, uh, you know, Kalpur itself is doing a lot of interesting work, Centre for Environment Education. There's also a group called Prayas, I think, Anil, uh, Paris, sir, uh, but I think Sujit has been able to come, I think, who had been doing work on all, you know, city planning and uh, transportation and other things. Uh, then also we have Sopecom, which is doing some work on water and things. So I think this is the type of core group which, uh, you know, forms this. We meet uh, once a month, quite an informal meeting, so one of us makes a presentation or somebody else comes from Hindu Pune City, we invite that pre person to present something. But basically it's all only alternative. We believe that we cannot just stop with critiquing the system, but we need to go beyond that. And, and the larger uh, uh, effort in that is how do you also conceptually uh, engage with these experiments or these type of new things? And how do you bring out an alternative paradigm? And things? Now, it's a very new beginning, and I think at a national level, I think there is also something called this uh, alternative confluence, uh, Vikalp Sangam. <coughs> at the first meeting of that is going to take place in Timbuktu Collective. Uh, in Karnataka, yeah. uh, boundary of Andra. Karnataka, Andra. Yeah, next Andra. month, that's from 17th to 19th, we can circulate that uh, details, if some of you are interested in that, mm -hmm. should come uh, for it. So we are trying to build up this type of uh, understanding from alternative practices, theoretical understanding, some type of thing into 
uh, some type of an alternative articulation of a different society which is more, maybe less exploitative, both ways in terms of environment as well as in terms of human relationships and things. I also like to end this uh, my small, this one with where he also said, ki, I also believe that I think the way Didi Kosambi said once, there was no golden past in this country. I mean, many of us go back saying, oh, everything was so beautiful in, in the, the earth, thing. Earth. But I think the way he said, ki, the golden era always lies in the future and it is for us to create it. I mean, this whole question of going back, and <coughs> even when you talk about traditional wisdoms and traditional practices, even the water, we find a whole lot of traditional systems. They have their strengths and they also have their weaknesses. And most of the traditional systems have been embedded in an exploitative relationship. Yeah. Whether, you know, who had access to water in the traditional, whether it be talk about the tank systems and type of thing, it was all in a way bounded by caste relations of that type. So we need to learn from the past, but I don't think that we can copy that into the present social political context. So we need to learn from that, integrate and move forward. So this type of conversations and uh, discussions, we can contribute to that larger goal, I think it should be good. So I mean, that's also why I'm here. Yeah.